For the rest of the liturgical year, we are going to deal with Mark's Gospel at all the Sunday Masses right up to uh, the beginning of Advent. The last Sunday of the liturgical year will be the Sunday before Thanksgiving, and until that time, we're looking at the Gospel of Mark every Sunday. So let me just say a few words about Mark. The Gospel of Mark is the shortest of the four Gospels, and it's the earliest. Mark himself was not one of the twelve. He was a follower of Jesus, and he appears more frequently in the Acts of the Apostles. He was from Jerusalem, and he was somehow related to Barnabas, who was a companion of St. Paul. And Barnabas and Paul took him on their first missionary journey, and he turned back. Strangely, we don't know exactly why. He might have gotten lonely for his home in Jerusalem, and therefore when they were going on the second missionary journey, Paul and Barnabas, Barnabas wanted to take him, but Paul said no. And Barnabas and Paul had a big falling out over Mark, which lasted a long time. It's rather interesting. Mark also uh, has one line in there that you'll find only in his gospel. That's in chapter 14, when Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. And there in verse 51, it says, after Jesus was arrested, there was a young man and the soldiers tried to capture him and they grabbed the cloak which he had around him and he ran off naked leaving the cloak behind him. It's rather interesting. It does tell us that even though Mark was not one of the twelve, he was a follower of Jesus and very familiar with Jesus. Uh, he gets all of the information for his gospel from Peter. Since he himself was not involved in the public life of Christ, there's no indication at all that Mark would have known about the ministry of Jesus in Galilee, where Jesus did almost all his public life. The Gospel of Mark has Jesus in Jerusalem only once, and that's for the last week of his life. So we'll be looking at Mark now for the next number of weeks. The second thing is, we spoke last week about Jesus' ministry in Galilee. And for those of you who may not have been here, just spend one moment to tell you so that you get a framework for the life of Jesus and the ministry of the Lord. South Pasadena is Jerusalem. Bethlehem is in Monrovia, somewhere out there, just a few miles away. Going north from here, about 65 miles, up around Camarillo, Ventura, that's Galilee. That's where Jesus spends most of his life. Nazareth, Capernaum, Mount of Beatitudes, Cana, uh, all of these places were up north there around Camarillo or Ventura. Now, pilgrims, we have many pilgrims here will understand this. So that's, uh, today's gospel is set up there. Now we'll be following Mark, and Mark will bring Jesus from Ventura right down to South Pasadena here for the last week of his life. And on the way, we'll run into this a couple of Sundays from now, he meets a blind man around Woodland Hills. Jericho is out there. Jericho is Woodland Hills. He meets a blind man named Bartimaeus, and he heals his blindness. So he's making a journey to Jerusalem. And as he's making the journey, walking through Galilee, ready to turn his face to Jerusalem, he begins to teach his disciples. And what we have in today's gospel is part of the teaching that Jesus has for his disciples as they walk their journey. And he teaches them that the Son of Man must suffer, be rejected by the people, he will die, and then he will rise. Three times in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus speaks to his followers, to the Twelve, about his passion, his death, and resurrection, and they do not hear it. They're deaf. In some ways, they may be afraid to face the true Messiah. 
So he keeps telling him, don't tell anybody about this until you have seen the suffering Messiah and until he has risen from the dead, only then can you preach. And you yourselves must suffer before you can proclaim the gospel. So let me look at this, what this might mean to us. Whether you're an elder or a younger person, whatever, your story is in this gospel. The story of your life is somehow here. And this gospel expresses the fullness of the humanity of Jesus Christ, how he will experience all the things that we experience. Have you ever felt that somebody close to you was in a different world? You were misunderstood, perhaps. Uh, the person was deaf to you. You had some great burden, some crisis, some darkness in your life, and you felt alone. You might have felt rejected, but you felt lonely and alone. Robert Coles calls this a moral loneliness. There are people around you, but your soul and your spirit is lonely for the absence of connection. And Jesus is telling his disciples about his suffering and his fear and his anxiety and all these things going to happen to him. They don't hear any of it. Perhaps one of his real disadvantages was he didn't have any women in the group because women would be more likely to hear what Jesus was saying. Seriously, that's true. But these men are into ambition. They're into uh, the high places, who's the most important, and they miss the sharing and the teaching of Jesus. They don't understand the Messiah. They're afraid to ask, it says. Sometimes we're afraid to ask because we don't want the answer that we might dislike. The first thing it has to do is, has to do with, is listening. We're not good listeners in many ways. I think we listen to respond. We don't listen to be enlightened. Largely, we don't listen to belong, to belong to the person, to belong to the moment, to share the moment. And when you hit your darkness and you hit your crisis and you're burdened and you feel alone, you search for your anamkara what John O'Donohue calls it, the Anam Kara. Anam meaning soul, kara, friend. It's a Gaelic. And in old monastic Celtic spirituality, no monk could go on a journey, a spiritual journey, without an Anam Kara, without a companion. You'll find this over and over again. You'll find in Dante's Divine Comedy, when he's going through his whole succession of experience, he needs a companion, so he gets Virgil. You'll remember that in Dante. So you look for your Anamkara. Who is the person? You're not looking for wisdom. You're not looking for an answer. You're looking for somebody who will belong to the moment. Somebody who will carry your cross with you, not solve the problem, but share the problem. That's exactly what Jesus is looking for. He's not looking for somebody who will spare him his suffering, who will take the cross away. He's looking for somebody who will walk with him and belong to him in his moment of fear or darkness. And when we read on, and you get to chapter 14 here in Mark, and Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he's going through this incredible trauma of facing his judgment and his suffering and his death. And it's clear he's in trauma here. And the disciples, they fall asleep. Remember that? Now that happens to us. And I will tell you, it must be true that the place in which we truly experience genuine love is in darkness. It's in a time of crisis. When all is well, we're all love one another, wonderful, wonderful. It's when we hit the difficult time where we need understanding 
And we need a listening heart. Not just a listening head, but a listening heart. I need somebody to understand what's happening to me. I need somebody to listen. Did anybody ever get frustrated with you and say, would you please listen? And you say, oh, yeah, well, tell me again. So listening is a teaching here. Um, it prompts us to, to enter into this day. There's somebody in your life that seeks you as an Anamkara. And finally, I'm reminded of uh, the story which comes from Russian mythology about two friends, Peter and Ivan. They were very close friends. They were drinking friends. They drank a lot of vodka together. And on one occasion, it is said, they were in the tavern and they were well into their drinking. And Peter says to Ivan, Ivan, do you love me? And Ivan said, of course I love you. You're my best friend. Of course I love you. Then he says, Ivan, do you know what pains me? And Ivan says, how could I know what pains you? To which Peter says, if you don't know what pains me, how can you say you love me? It must be true. Amen.